Hi, this is Father Paul from the Sunday Mass, and I want to thank you for tuning in today to the Sunday Mass on our YouTube channel. I'd just like to take this opportunity to remind you to subscribe to our YouTube channel for free and become part of our Sunday Mass community of faith. Now let us begin our celebration. Welcome everyone to our celebration of the Sunday Mass today, a ministry of the Passionist community. It is May 31st, the last day of May, and it's the Feast of Pentecost. Our presider today is Father Robert Jurger from our Passionist community in Pelham, New York. So if you have your prayer guide, and it's the new prayer guide, volume 96, take it out, turn to page 61, and let us begin our celebration. of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Today we celebrate Pentecost Sunday, which is the birthday of the church. So let's ask our God to fill us with peace and with his spirit. And let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and blood. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who by the mystery of today's great feast, Sanctify your whole church in every people and nation. Pour out, we pray, the gifts of the Holy Spirit across the face of the earth. And with the divine grace that was at work when the gospel was first proclaimed, fill now once more the hearts of believers through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the time for Pentecost was fulfilled, they were all in one place together. And suddenly there came from the sky a noise like a strong driving wind, and it filled the entire house in which they were. There appeared to them tongues as of fire, which parted and came to rest on each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and began to speak in different tongues as the Spirit enabled them to proclaim. Now, there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven staying in Jerusalem. At this sound, they gathered in a large crowd, but they were confused because each one heard them speaking in his own language. They were astounded, and in amazement they asked, are not all of these people who are speaking Galileans? then how does each of us hear them in his native language? We are Parthians, Medes, and Elamites, inhabitants of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the districts of Libya near Cyrene, as well as travelers from Rome, 
both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs. Yet we hear them speaking in our own tongues of the mighty acts of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. O oh Lord, my God, how great you are. How many are your works, O Lord? The earth is full of your creatures. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. There are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same Spirit. There are different forms of service, but the same Lord. There are different workings, but the same God who produces all of them in everyone. To each individual, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for some benefit. As a body is one, though it has many parts, and all the parts of the body, though many, are one body, so also Christ. For in one Spirit we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, slaves or free persons, and we were all given to drink of the one Spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of the faithful and kindle in them the fire of your love. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord, and Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So have you, um, any of you have a secret hiding place? So maybe when you were a little kid, did you ever have a secret hiding place you did? In my, yeah, me too. When I was a little kid, we had a, big, uh, we had a big couch in our living room, and I, my secret hiding place was behind that couch. So if I got in trouble with my mother or something happened or I was feeling ashamed or there was lightning outside and I was scared, I would go to my secret hiding place. I thought nobody would find me there. And I would go, it was right, right in the back of the couch. It was really dusty, but it was right in the back of the couch. 
Well, you know, in today's gospel, the, the apostles, the followers of Jesus, they're in the, a secret hiding place. It's called the, the upper room, and Jesus has been crucified, and that was terrible and horrible, and, you know, they were witnesses to all of that, but I think they were also feeling really, really bad about themselves. You know, they, they were very ashamed that they had run away from Jesus. They kind of deserted him. You know, maybe they were traumatized by something. You know, maybe they were very afraid. Maybe they were feeling really guilty. You know, maybe they were just grieving because they missed Jesus so much and they wondered, you know, what's, what's going to happen now? And now, you know, whether you're really young or, you know, whether you're old, no, no matter what your life is or where it is, you know, sometimes we, we go to those secret hiding places. And the, the great thing about uh, today's gospel is that Jesus always comes to us where we are, not where we think we should be. So, you know, if, if any of us at home, here, hospital, nursing home, prison, whatever, if we're feeling very, um, at any times, guilty or ashamed of something, or if we're afraid or we're not exactly sure what to do, or whether we were in deep, deep grief or mourning, that somehow Jesus comes to those places and through those walls and through the hard times to give us peace and to breathe new life into us. Jesus always comes where we are and not where we think we should be. So isn't that great? Today we celebrate the Feast of Pentecost, the birthday of the church, when the church first started but it started out of our own vulnerability, our own wounds, our own tears and fears and whatever it is that we built and how somehow Jesus uses all of that and, and it allows it to become redemptive and new life so that we can proclaim a Jesus who loves us and who saves us and who sets us free from our wounds. Amen? Amen. 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 Okay, let's stand now and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. So let us confidently call upon the Holy Spirit to hear our prayers this day. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray that the Holy Spirit will guide and direct all public servants and lead them along the paths of life, justice, and peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, our, hear our, prayer. our prayer. We pray that the Holy Spirit will enliven our faith, hope, and love for God, others, and ourselves. We pray to the Lord. 
Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. prayer. We pray for the intentions of our benefactors, the intentions of our television parishioners that will be placed next to the altar, and for Gil Vasquez, for whom we pray in a special way at this Mass. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of life, Holy Spirit of love, hear our prayers. For those we have spoken, those placed near our altar, and those you have found in our hearts through Christ our Lord. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and the good of all of the Church. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that as promised by your Son, the Holy Spirit may reveal to us more abundantly the hidden mystery of this sacrifice and graciously lead us into all truth through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for bringing your Paschal mystery to completion. You bestowed the Holy Spirit today on those you made your adopted children by uniting them to your only begotten Son. This same Spirit, as the Church came to birth, opened to all peoples the knowledge of God and brought together the many languages of the earth in one profession of the one faith. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts Sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. When we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Nicholas, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Now let us together pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with, with your spirit. spirit. And let us offer each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you, you take, take away, away the sin of the, the world. world. Have, Have mercy, mercy on us. us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. There are many gifts, but one same Spirit, and many works, but one Lord. And in different ways, in different people, the one same Spirit is made known. For in each 
Let us pray. O God, who bestow heavenly gifts upon your church, safeguard, we pray, the grace you have given, that the gift of the Holy Spirit poured out upon her may retain all its force, and that this spiritual food may give her abundance of eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. Thank you, everyone, for joining us today for our celebration of the Sunday Mass. A special thanks to Father Robert for leading us in prayer, and to the third grade and their teachers from Immaculate Conception Catholic Academy who have joined us and helped us to pray today. As I mentioned at the beginning of Mass, we're beginning our new prayer guide, the 96th volume today. Hopefully you have received yours. If you have not received yours or if you would like one, please contact us either by going on the website, www.thesundaymass.org, or give us a call on the number that you see on the screen throughout the Mass, and we'll make sure that you get one. Uh, we're getting ready to enter into June, so please continue to send in your prayers and petitions, especially those for the fathers that you would like to have remembered as we come upon Father's Day in the middle of this month. So have a great week, everyone, and until we meet again next Sunday, may the passion of Jesus Christ be...